Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss regarding physical carcinogens. So in our previous class we discussed regarding chemical carcinogens and what so about direct and indirect chemical carcinogens. So physical carcinogens is it is nothing but the process of induction of cancer by physical carcinogens and physical carcinogens are the physical agents which will induce cancer. So we have two different categories of physical carcinogens. One is radiation carcinogens and non-radiation carcinogens. So radiation carcinogens is or radiation carcinogens are uh, one of the most important thing which we so which we are going to discuss uh, in this lecture. So we have two major types of radiation carcinogens. One is UV radiation, ultraviolet radiation, and IR radiation, ionizing radiation. So UV radiation will have lesser penetrating ability. Just it will, uh, it can penetrate up to your skin. So that's why, uh, on chronic exposure to UV radiation, you will develop mostly skin cancers. And IR radiation will have a greater penetrating ability. So upon chronic exposure to this IR radiation, it results in the cancer of deeper arcans. So generally. Uh, whenever if you got exposed to any radiation whether it is UV radiation or IR radiation so it is not possible to get uh, to develop cancer in an acute manner so generally it will take 10 to 20 years and even later so upon chronic exposure to that UV or IR radiation we will develop uh, those uh, cancers and one more important aspect which you have to know here is co-carcinogens so these UV radiation and IR radiation will act as co-carcinogens so which means so they will enhance the effect of another carcinogen such as chemical carcinogens so now we will discuss regarding uv radiation and how uv radiation will cause uh, cancers in the process of induction of cancer by uv radiation so there are three major sources for uv radiation one is uh, sunlight and the second one is welder's arc and the third one is uv lamp so I already told you UV radiation will have lesser penetrating ability so just it can penetrate up to your skin. So we have two forms of UV radiation. One is UV A radiation and the second one is UV B radiation. So UV radi A radiation will penetrate up to your dermis and UV B radiation will penetrate up to epidermis. And So we already discussed regarding the penetrating ability of this UV radiation is just a uh, few millimeters only. Uh, but this efficiency of UV light or UV radiation to cause cancer it depends on two things. One is extent of light absorbing capacity of individual skin and as well as the protective melanin pigmentation of the skin. So here the most important aspect which you have to learn is protective melanin pigmentation. So melanin which is there in our skin is protective for the development of so it will protect so it, it is protective for the development of uh, cancers due to UV radiation. So those individuals who are fair and who are having very less amount of uh, melanin pigment in their skin will be at a great risk of developing skin cancers when compared to those individuals who are uh, black and who have great amount of melanin pigment in their body in, that means in their skin. So Excessive exposure to UV rays can cause various forms of skin cancer such as uh, squamous cell carcinoma, basal cell carcinoma and malignant melanoma. And we already discussed regarding this uh, pigmentation aspect of uh, this UV radiation as well as the development of cancer. So uh, fair skinned Europeans uh, and albinos, so those individuals who are uh, suffering from albinism. And those individuals who do not tan readily, that means those fair skinned people, will be at greater risk of developing skin cancer uh, when compared to others. And as well as inhabitants of Australia, New Zealand, and those who are living closer to the equator, they will receive more sunlight. Uh, so more sunlight means more UV radiation. So they will be at a great risk of developing skin cancers. And farmers as well as outdoor workers, due to the effect of acne light radiation, they will also be at a great risk. And the development of cancer so in this picture so you can see uh, the people uh, who are at great risk of developing skin cancers due to UV radiation as well as those who are at less risk of developing cancers due to UV radiation so here uh, so if you see the first person who is a very fair one he will have so in his skin he lacks melanin pigmentation 
and so that's why he is at high risk and in the last if you see the last person who has, so that means who is a black one uh, he he is having a greater amount of melanin pigmentation in skin will be at risk if less risk of developing skin cancers so due to uv radiation so this is a picture depicting the risk of uv radiation induced skin cancer from higher to lower and this picture so it was already discussed in our previous uh, session of uh, chemical carcinogenesis so just uh, the summary of this slide is so whenever a normal cell uh, got exposed to any carcinogen so it results in dna damage so if the individual is not having the ability to repair its uh, dna damage so it will undergo mutation and if that mutation happens if that mutation happens uh, in oncogenes anti oncogenes and apoptosis regulatory genes so it results in the development of cancer so which ultimately turns into a malignant uh, so malignant tumor or a benign tumor based on its characteristics and coming to this uv radiation induced carcinogenesis so we are all very well known so sun light as well as the welder's arc as well as the uv lamps are the major sources of uv radiation whenever an individual got exposed to this uv radiation for a chronic period so his skin cells that means since that uv radiation penetrates up to your skin only or skin epidermis as well as dermis only so those uh, cells got exposed to this uv radiation so whenever the cell got exposed to uv radiation whatever the dna which is there in the skin will get uh, uh, so <coughs> so will get uh, encountered with that uv radiation resulting in dna damage by the formation of pyrimidine dimers so if the individual is very healthy so then if the individual's dna mechanism is very good so whatever the damage which was happened to the dna so that will get repaired and again that uh, individual will come back to its normal state or the cells will come back to its normal state but if the dna repair mechanism of that individual if he lacks that so then that uh, results in dna damage which is followed by mutations and if those mutations happen in oncogenes as well as anti oncogenes and in apoptosis regulatory genes it results in the development of cancer and here uh, the thing which we have to uh, uh, so mention in detail is predisposed individuals so generally when compared to the normal individuals those individuals who are getting suffer from some types of hereditary disorders so in which they lack dna repair mechanism so we'll call them as predisposed individuals so if those individuals got exposed to this uh, uv radiation more in a chronic manner so then they will develop uh, the skin cancers or as well as other types of cancer more and these are all the different diseases where the dna repair mechanism uh, will get so it will be in, so it means where there will be a defective dna repair mechanism such as xeroderma pigmentosum ataxia telangiectasia bloom syndrome as well as fanconis anemia and coming to the ir radiation ionizing radiation of all kinds like x rays alpha rays beta rays and radioactive isotopes protons and neutrons can cause cancer in animals as well as men so on the most uh, common type of ir radiation exposure is possible with x rays uh, and as well as the radioactive isotopes uh, most common types of cancers with ir radiation include uh, leukemias uh, cancers of thyroid and cancer of skin breast ovaries uterus lung myeloma as well as salivary glands uh, those people affected by various cancers upon exposure to uh, IR radiation that means these are all the different examples of those people. So X-ray workers as well as the radiotherapists who are working in radiotherapy department. So they will be at a great risk of uh, developing different types of cancers since they will have a greater chance of exposing to that IR radiation. So and in history we can find an example of American watch working girls who are engaged in painting the dials of a watch with luminous radium so where they are painting it with a brush so with that brush tip will be kept in their mouth to get a pointed so pointed brush so whenever they got exposed to that radium uh, by ingestion so they developed osteosarcoma and even miners who are working in radioactive mines they will be at a great risk of developing cancers so because of the chronic exposure to air radiation and Japanese atom bomb survivors of Hiroshima and Nagasaki and accidental leakage of nuclear power plant in 1950, so 1985 in Chernobyl. So all those people uh, got exposed to this IR radiation in a chronic manner and they developed various types of cancers.
So next we are going to discuss about this uh, mechanism of IR induced uh, carcinogens. So we already discussed regarding various sources of IR radiation such as X-rays, alpha rays, beta rays as well as uh, gamma rays and radioisotopes. So generally uh, whatever the mechanism which is there, radiation induced DNA damage so of the cells. So it will be possible by two mechanisms. One is by direct mechanism and the second one is by indirect mechanism. So if you see the direct mechanism, so whenever a cell got, so whenever a cell got uh, chronically exposed to IR radiation, since most of the cell is made up of water, 80% of the cell is made up of water and uh, the remaining uh, one is nothing but the cellular components. So there is a chance that uh, that radiation will directly and go hit the, go and hit that uh, DNA which is there in the cell which causes DNA damage which is followed by mutations and if those mutations happen in uh, oncogenes, anti-oncogenes and DNA, and DNA uh, apoptosis regulatory genes, it results in the development of uh, tumors. And coming to the uh, indirect mechanism, so we already discussed it in our physical uh, cell injury, so uh, that means physical uh, process of cell injury. So there, uh, we discussed about the formation of free radicals. We already said 80% uh, of the cell is made up of water and whenever this radiation will go and hit that water molecule, so it results in the development of hydroxyl free radical and that free radical uh, is having an unpaid electron in their outer orbit and search for the electron rich substance to grab an electron. So, uh, so that a formed free radical will go and bind to the DNA of that uh, specific cell and causes DNA damage which is followed by mutations and if those mutations happens in anti oncogenes and anti oncogenes and as well as apoptosis regulatory genes so which is followed by the development of tumor and even sometimes so up to now we discussed regarding radiation carcinogens as well as radiation carcinogenesis so where we discussed about UV radiation and how UV radiation will develop cancer and IR radiation and how IR radiation will develop cancer and we also have to uh, so discuss about this non-radiation physical carcinogens. So actually, there is no clear scientific evidence that uh, apart from this radiation, whatever the other physical substances which are there, they will have a. So they are not having a clear role in the development of cancer. So even though there are some incidences which were happened. Uh, but they are not having a good scientific evidence. So mechanical injury to the tissues as a form of stones in gallbladder, stones in urinary tract uh, which are there for a longer period of time as well as heal scars following burns and trauma and has been suggested as the cause of increased risk of carcinoma in these tissues but the evidences, uh, exact scientific evidences are not convincing. Thank you.